Inktober is an annual online event where artists from all over the world challenge themselves by doing an ink drawing a day every day during the month of October. In this video, I explain my intended contributions to Inktober. There is a style of art called Zentangle. It uses patterns called tangles often placed within a layout called a string to create pieces of abstract art. There are hundreds, if not thousands, of tangles, and a string can be almost anything. In fact, if you don't want to, you don't have to use a string. You can just doodle. Many people use a three and a half by three and a half inch square of paper and ink to create their tangles. I, however, use a software package called Inkscape. Inkscape is free software you can download. It will run on both a PC and a Mac. I have placed a link to Inkscape below this video. There are many online communities where people get together to create a particular type of art. Zentangle is no exception. Every year, Stephanie Jennifer, a Zentangle teacher and artist, provides a tangle a day for you to use in your Inktober drawing. I decided this year I would use Stephanie's prompts to not only do a tangle a day, but also a video a day. Below this video, there is a link to Stephanie's website where you can review her prompts. She, by the way, also has a Facebook group where you can post your art. I will be posting there, and I hope you will too. I will not be creating my art in the order she lists the tangles. I have reordered them from easiest to hardest to create in Inkscape so that anyone interested in learning can follow along. Let's get started. When I open Inkscape, I am presented with this window. I'm not going to explain the entire window because for the most part, you will learn as you go. But I need to set my document properties, so I need to explain a few things. The large white area in the center of the window is called the canvas. The bounded area is called the page, and the lines that define the page are called the page border. The dark area to the right and below the page is called the border shadow. Above the canvas there is a horizontal ruler and to the left a vertical ruler. As I create my art I can use the rulers to do things such as position and align objects. As I go through the next 31 days I'm going to start each project with the same document property settings. I'll show you how I set them. If you are following along, you will need to set these properties at the start of each project. To open my Document Properties dialog box, I click File, Document Properties. I use the Page tab to set my page properties. I'm creating my artwork for posting on the web, so in the Display Units field, I select PX for pixels. This selection will set the unit of measure used on the rulers and used when drawing. This is the most commonly used unit of measure for web projects. In the page size section, there is a long list of standard page sizes that I could select from, but I don't want to use any of them. I'm going to create a custom page size. In the Units field, I select PX for Pixels, then I enter 600 in the Width field and 600 in the Height 
field. I now have a page with a width and a height of 600 pixels. I click the Zoom to Fit Page in Window icon. That causes my page to fill my window. All of the other entries on this tab are fine, so I click the Grids tab to set up my grid. There are two types of grids, and I will be working with both of them. But, for now, I am just going to set the properties for a rectangular grid. I click the New button. Make sure PX for pixels appears in the Grid Units field. Enter 10 in the Spacing X field and 10 in the Spacing Y field. That will create grid boxes that are 10 pixels by 10 pixels. A major grid line is a darker line. I enter 6 in the major grid line every field. Now every sixth line is a major grid line. I click the Snap tab. Snapping will allow me to position objects exactly where I want. And for many of the things I'm going to do, snapping is important. However, the snapping defaults are too sensitive for me. In the Snap to Objects section, I set the snap only when closer than setting to 5 pixels. In the Snap to Grid section, I select Snap only when closer than, and I set the Snap distance to 5 pixels. In the Snap to Guide section, I set the Snap distance to 5 pixels. I've now set my Document Properties, so I can close the Document Properties dialog box. Along the left side of my window are my tools. I will show you how I use them as I create my drawings. However, for anyone who wants to follow along, I am going to show you how I set my preferences for the rectangle, ellipse, star, spiral, pencil, pen, and calligraphy tools. These preferences only need to be set once. Because most people who create tangles use pen and ink, I try to make my art look as much like pen and ink as I can. Inkscape objects can consist of a stroke and a fill. A stroke is an outline and a fill fills the interior of the outline. For the tools mentioned, I set my preferences to only draw the stroke. Here's how I do it. I start by clicking the Rectangle tool. Then, while holding down my left mouse button, I drag to create a rectangle. I release the left mouse button when the rectangle is the size I want. I click the Fill and Stroke icon to open the Fill and Stroke dialog box. On the Fill tab, I set the Fill to No Paint and make sure all of the other settings are set as shown. Then I select the Stroke Paint tab and set the RGBA to 0000000FF and make sure all of the other settings are as shown. On the Stroke Style tab, I set the width to 2 pixels the join to round, and the cap to butt, and I make sure all of the other settings are as shown. With my rectangle still selected, I double click on the rectangle tool to open the preferences dialog box. Rectangle is selected. I select this tool's own style and then click take from selection. I then click Ellipse. I select this tool's own style and then click Take from Selection. 
I repeat the process for the star spiral pencil pen and calligraphy tools. Then I close my preferences dialog box. I am now ready to start my project. Look for the videos.